Hi, I'm Craig Frazier, and I'm here in the beautiful Createx Colors headquarters in downtown East Granby, Connecticut. Got it right this time. And we're here for another video. And by request, from your request, we have people that come in and say nice things on the tech line, and they also ask for suggestions. And uh, people want to see another realistic flame video. Now the reason I say another is there are a lot out there. I mean there is to coin a word a plethora which is basically Latin for a buttload of realistic flame a realistic fire, true fire, rest in peace Mike Lavalle, or whatever you want to call it. Lots and lots of them are out there. I've done honestly about a half dozen different videos to different companies. Now why would I do another one? Well because you guys asked for it and I change it up all the time. And if you really look at anyone doing the, the flames out there, they do, they change it up uh, according to style, according to their own personal style, according to the demand out there in the industry. Also, we've got a new product here. Craytex's new Wicked Opaque Colors. And uh, if you can go check out the Wicked Opaque White video I just did at Craytex, smoking video. It was very, very cool because I didn't know what to expect. It was one of those like, I'm doing the video, I'm surprised. So this is going to be the same way with me. It's, it's like, I, I would love to say I plan this to make it more spontaneous. In reality, I'm just lazy. I hate doing things twice, so I just do it on camera. So we're going to do the realistic fire using uh, a combination of, because I had some techniques in the past where I showed the nothing but candies with a white base on black. I mean black because I got my black panel here. <clears throat> That's one way of doing it. There's also ways of doing it with nothing but opaques. And uh, I've tried that too. And this one is a hybrid. Ooh, yeah, we got opaques and we got the Candy 2O down below. And we, I mixed up a whole lot of them. Uh, don't worry, I wanted to mix on camera. I got them all all back here, you know. It's like a cooking show. I did it ahead of time. So uh, that's about as, all the strategy you're going to get out of me. Anyway, we're going to do this realistic fire. We're going to do this in two videos. One video is going to be black panel, where I'm going to do a cool realistic fire that's what I call traditional colors of realistic fire. And then I'm going to do one that's like a, a slime green or a lime green, because I really, really love doing the lime green. It was kind of a toss up. Should I do lime green or do blue? I did blue on a video a long time ago. I'm going to do lime green on this one. And uh, we're going to do that one. <clears throat> now the, next, the other video is going to be on a white panel, where we're going to do uh, a blue flame on white, because blue looks really good on white. And then we're going to do what I call a smoke flame. In other words, we're going to use black and candy black to do a smoke. But that's another video. This video is going to be realistic fire and the slime green. Now. Am I going to use stencils? Yes, I am. I'm going to do a combination because this is a hybrid effect. Any good realistic fire technique by anyone out there is a combination of freehand and stencil. So it's a little left brain, a little right brain, or if you're dyslexic, left, right, whichever, exactly. So what stencils am I using? <laughs> using mine because it's capitalism is not dead yet in America. Anyway, it's called the H stencil. Art Tools had it for quite a while. The funny thing is I've had it for even longer because uh, there's a lot of different shapes. I'm lazy. I just make an H. It looks like an H, so I call it the H stencil. And this is a big one, and <laughs> this is a small one. When you buy from Art Tool, you get both of them. You don't get four, you get two. Don't be greedy. You can buy two packs if you want to have this many. So. Um, we're going to use these stencils uh, to do the realistic fire, and I'm just going to use Eclipse airbrushes. Now, uh, working on a full-size vehicle, would I use a small spray gun? Would I use a TH2? Yeah, yeah, I might. I'm going to work on a small panel. I'm going to use small stencils, small airbrushes, use small amounts of paint. Anyway, uh, I'd ask if there's any questions, but this is a video, so that's completely moot. I will say, first color, what should it be? A lot of people will go on and say, oh, if you're going on black, you need to start with white, and, uh, or you start with yellow. Or you can start with orange, or you can start with red. Now, I mean, in, in, in deference and respect to Mike Lavalley, which one did he start with? The answer is yes <laughs> to all of them, because he would do it at different times. I remember it was white, then it was yellow, and it would progressively move along, and sometimes he would go back again. He would do It depends on what he felt like, what color he was going over, the effect or look he's going with. We are going to start with uh, going right on top of orange. And I believe uh, Mike always loved the molly orange. What we have right here is the, um, the pyrrole orange from uh, Craytex, the new opaque. And uh, these things are amazing. Now, normally when working on automotive surface, I would take my Wicked or my other pen, and I would mix them in with a binder, like uh, in this case 4050 or back in the day, and I still use 4030 on my canvases and wall murals, but back in the day I was using it for automotive too. You have to mix it in there, make sure it sticks real good. You're taking a, back in the day, a wicked t-shirt paint and making it into an acrylic urethane for automotive. Ah, not anymore. It's built inside, just like other products on the market. It's like, guess what? We've put it inside. The acrylic urethane's inside there. It's already in there, and you don't need to add any. 
Now, I was convinced for a while, oh, if you thin it down too much, you gotta add some more. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's still good, don't worry about it. So we've got these mixed now. I did it like this one, and no, we didn't use this. Now, why do I have the 4050 here? Um, not because I'm gonna use it in this, I use the 4050 in the candies to mix it up in there. And what, do I, what ratio do I use? Three to one, three parts candy, one part. 4050, and then I use 4011. Now, I did use 4011 in all these, very little. This stuff actually sprays out of the bottle, not bad. I would, uh, for small airbrushing and when I'm on gradation, add some reducer, it's gonna get a little spitty. But you can put this in a full-size spray gun, just honk it out. Now, I got it already in here. Whenever I add reducer, I had it might be 5%. Didn't add a lot. Mix it, let it sit 15 minutes. All these have been sitting for 15 minutes. Um, probably because I've been talking for 15 minutes. So let's go ahead and start painting. I'm gonna go ahead and load up my Eclipse CS with some of my orange, and we're gonna start working on this panel. Now, if you're wondering what the panel is, this is just a standard powder-coated black panel. I scotch bright it with a red scotch bright, and I mask it off. Mimics working on top of a cleared surface. If I have a choice, am I gonna work on top of base coat or clear? I love working on top of clear because no matter what, I can sand it off and no matter how much material I honk on it, I'm never gonna revert powder coat or clear back into my paint. If this was black base coat I sprayed on here, if I got a lot of reducer on there, that black's gonna start pulling in. No matter what you do, it's gonna happen unless you clear coat it. So something to think about, food for thought. Uh, that's why I love doing realistic fire on vehicles already painted. I just sand the clear, do that, and then I, Dion comes in and clear coats it. So I'm gonna go ahead and load my airbrush up and we're gonna get to doing the first pyro orange color on our realistic fire. Okay, got my orange in my airbrush and got my stencil ready. If you're wondering uh, what that little uh, sperm looking dude right there is, it's pretty much it, it's a little ember. I'm gonna tape him off because I don't want any overspray from that. So if you ever see these stencils and they're taped off like that, it's because I'm not using him right now. There we go, that's good. <clears throat> now the way I use this, the way I do this fire, is you always wanna start at the very basis. Uh, the, ba you know, the, the base of the fire, where the actual element is, uh, that's whatever's on fire. So I'm gonna come in here and just use a little bit of the stencil, just kind of keep it here loosely and build up a soft orange. I'm not coming in really bright, but you look at here, you can see it very much of it, and now you can see it a lot. And then I'll kind of do another layer of the orange here. And sometimes I'll even move the airbrush up as I paint. And that creates a little bit of a organic look to it. I want to make sure not to get it too wet. And take your time on this. I'm going to build orange all along the bottom like this. And this is my sketch. The reason I'm doing it very, very dark is if I make a mistake, I can always change it. A little, and I'll do a little ember here. I'll use this as an ember. This is also an ember, that little opening. What you're doing is you're painting the negative space of the fire. Or the, you're actually spending, you're, spa you're painting the positive space of the fire, my mistake, by, you, by masking off the negative with this stencil. So, I'll come in and add a little freehanding. I'll do a little stencil that worked there, and then now it's gonna be freehand. I'll use this end over here. Kind of shape something over here. And you may look at it and say, what the heck are you doing? It's, this is the cool thing about the fire. It doesn't make sense as you start. It kind of just gets weird. And I'll do, I'm, and I'm actually varying my techniques as I'm doing this on purpose. This is just a base. Now, what if you want to come in and do some splattering? You can do that. What if you accidentally splatter something? I'm going to purposely create some splatter on here. Why? Because I can. 
This is another technique. You can do it before or you can do it after, you know, later on. You can do that, but that's going to be more apparent. This, I'm going to be layering color on it and I'll be kind of hiding some of it. Now, what's the danger of doing that? It's wet paint, so you want to spray a little air on there. You don't need to dry the entire thing, just kind of dry the outside shell of that drop. Otherwise, you're going to have like uh, basically drop races going across your painting, leaving nice little lines. You don't need that. I'll take this end cap off so I can actually do some little subtle details. Building up a base with this orange. And I want it to be loose. I'll tighten it later. A little bit of an ember up here. In there. And I'll even come in do a little smoke. My whole point is I don't want any of the black left showing. I said, well, there's a lot of black showing. No, there's not. There is, but you can see the black, but there's overspray. There's overspray over on this part. The reason I'm not that concerned is I'm going to paint it later. So now if this is someone else's project next door, yes, I would care at my shop. But in this one, I just really want to build up this orange from the ground up. And it's like stained glass windows. Like, you know, you're laying in your, uh, like those tissue paper when you're a kid, and you make those stained glass windows without tissue paper, and you lay it in, it creates all the different shapes. That's what I'm doing, I'm just creating these varied shapes. Some of them I will totally, I, maybe I don't dig, I'm like, I don't like that, I'm gonna redo it later. Okay, I'm kind of happy with the way that orange is. This is the background base orange. Is any of this going to show in the end? Yeah, a little bit of it, not a whole lot. Uh, and then what's the next color I'm going to come in with? Well, I'm going to come in with a little bit of, uh, normally I might come in with a little bit of a red right now, but I'm going to come in with my yellow on top of that because I want the orange to kind of bleed into some of my yellow. And I'm going to use the opaque yellow. So let me clean up my brush and I'll go over to the wicked opaque yellow. Okay, one thing I like to do whenever I'm going in between each color, and this, whether it's a mural or whatever, is I'll take and I'll wipe down the surface, just lightly, don't scrub on it, with a white towel. So I can see now, that right there is overspray. Now, I mean, everyone knows what overspray is. It has no purpose on this mural. The reason is it's gonna make it dry and dusty and it'll start building up what I call a paint sponge. Now, if you're, if you're moving this, it's leaving, now there's a couple of areas that are really soft on and you can see it kind of maybe left a little streaks. That's why you don't wanna to push too hard. And it's a little bit of a textured towel. Uh, a little blue shop towel is probably softer. Not that big a deal, we got so much stuff coming on, it doesn't matter, but I'd rather get that off. So now it actually feels physically smoother than it was before. And we come in and I'm gonna, I'm gonna not even really emphasize what I'd done before. I'm gonna create kind of a few other, another, a, another tier of fire right here, because that's in the background. I'm gonna do one right about here, build it up soft with the yellow. and can then build it up as I go along from that. And then I'll kind of start copying some of the existing flames in the background. I'll do a really skinny one right here.
So you know, I'll keep on building the color. Now, the reason I like the H stencil is I can move, like I can have this piece lifted up here. I can also bring these two pieces here and I can bring them together. So I could do a little, like something right here by folding them over like that. I can also hold them further apart. Tons of different things you can do, depends on how you hold them. Now, I hit those when they're still wet. That's something you gotta be careful with with any paint, whether it be water-based or solvent. But you can come in and work it. End up looking, screw ups are mistakes. You can come in and even touch it with your thumb and finger, do a little finger painting. You're just good, if you're gonna do a weird little splotch there, you're gonna have to do it throughout the piece for continuity. But every mistake you make can be turned into something. And just keep on working this, creating shapes I want to see, and I'll create inclusions that I may fill in later, or I may not. I may just color over them with something else as I build it along. We just always, the one thing we want to make sure is the embers are bright, but the base of the fire and the embers, and so the embers can be like little floating pieces of coal or something or whatever's burning. Those are allowed to be bright, but the base of your fire is always going to be the brightest. So I really honk that yellow in here. And I'll even come in with some white later to really pop that off. Now I had this one was a little freehand, a little jiggle. Actually my hand screwed up there and moved. That's why when I did that it was a little, oh, that's screwed up. No, just screw up, just go with it, use it. See how I turn that? Another thing you can do is as you start practicing getting better at it, you can actually move the stencil as you're going along. For instance, I could start a color here, and I could just do this. I could start here, and as I move up, now I did do a little bit of a streak there, I can come in and freehand that. This you can just add as many little touches as you like as you go along. There's no rules doing this. You're always trying to make it look different. I'm trying to make this different than the fire I'm going to do next door. So I'm doing something a little bit different over here than that one. All your fire, if you only do one type of fire, now you say, well, if you do one type and you get recognized for it, people will then want you to do it all the time. Yeah, but then you'll be stuck doing that one time. So experiment, try something different. Like I've actually never used this new paint by Createx, this new wicked opaque. I've never used it before on fire. It's also been a while since I've done some realistic fire. So I'm rusty. But that actually works good because then I'll do something like, oh, that's interesting. I've never done that before. That's, everything you do should be like that. Otherwise, you're just going to be boring. I'm kind of digging that. So what's the next thing I'm gonna do? Well, now I've got my base color on here, um, done with opaque. I'm gonna come in and uh, I'm gonna add a little purple. And they say, what, purple? Well, I'm not gonna add it here. I'm gonna add it up in smoke in here. And I'm gonna use, guess what? 
you got it, Craytex is new, wicked, opaque purple. I think it's a dioxylene violet or something. I can't remember what it is. I'll go look at the bottle. But anyway, I'm going to bring some purple up in here that then I'll blend the candies up into, and that will just have like a cool, it'll just really be light, so only at certain angles you see that purple. So I'm pretty happy with it right now. It's kind of looking pretty good. The black's gone. There's so much overspray on this, um, but we're going to bring the black back in. That's one of the last things I do, second to the last thing I do. The last thing I do is come in with some little hot spots and white and pop that, and then I, I kind of contour with candy. So uh, you know, let me clean up my airbrush, and we'll go on to the next step. Now, I was pretty close. It wasn't dioxylene violet. It was dioxylene purple, but you know, I got one word correct. That's actually pretty good for me. I'm going to come in and just blend it. I want to see how this looks. Make sure my hose didn't get caught behind me. Let's see how this blends into the black. You can see it at an angle. That's what I want. I want it to be really subtle. Get rid of some of that overspray around the edges. So it's more color, but it's a color you only see at an angle. Uh, I'll even come in and use this stencil. Little texture stencil from Gerald Mendez. We'll add some interesting patterns that you only see at angles when it's cleared. heavy up here because I really want that to show. Now I'm just going to really just blast it in those corners. And it adds an additional, this, uh, I'm kind of digging this stencil on the fire. i would used it a few times on fire, but not too often. It kind of gives it a little bit of a randomness in there, which, uh, which I'm liking. Now, I'm going to come in and use a little bitty guy even though it doesn't match anything in there because I used the big one before. I'm going to use this to kind of bring back some inclusions. It does match. It matches this one. But I'm going to do this with black later on, but you can do it with the violet too. Now the inclusions, just the way of bringing back some of that black that disappeared. And doing it with the, the violet, it's not as strong as if you did the black and it's bringing color in. So you can bring back black without using black. And bring back the darkness in here. A little bit here and there, not much. Don't do too much. We, just want to, we don't want to kill all of our color, but we want to maybe eliminate a little bit of it in there. Just, it adds a little bit of depth by doing that. Bring some of the depth back with that overspray. And just the pattern itself. And you can even come in and use that flame stencil to create some additional shapes. Pretty cool. So you can't see it from here, but when it's clear, that purple will really be ghosted in there nicely. Now, what am I going to do? What step now? Um, I'm actually going to come in with uh, some grabber orange candy and kind of bring it back some of these oranges back in there and soften up some of that yellow and blend it in. And then I'll come in with some white. And I'm going to jump back around a couple of times. I'm going to come in some white for some very highlights and then come in with my tequila yellow, lemon yellow mix and use that to, to again, get rid of some of that white and just kind of push, pull, and go back and forth with the fire. Okay, we're back on again and clean my brush out. Oh, make sure the rag's not wet. That a little water on that rag. I'm just going to get some of that overspray. You can still see a little bit of yellow, a little bit of that purple coming off there. That's good. And then I'm going to come in with, and I'm going to use a stencil on this part. This is just that grabber orange. I hope the camera's not picking up, it's going to pick up some of the, the, the different casts from me spraying it heavy and light. And that kind of can throw you, because when you clear it, that all goes away. And you think, oh, he's you're covering up all your yellow. No, 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 we're going to bring back some of the yellow. Not all of it, we're going to bring back some of it. This is candy now, so this is not covering anything. It's tinting it. So what we painted before is still there in layers. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and replace this with uh, candy blood red and do the same thing down and bring the red in. La I forgot to mention that in the last step. Then I'm gonna bring in my white and then the last thing I'll do will be that uh, tequila lemon yellow candy that just kind of comes in and pops it. I don't want any pure white to be left on here. It'll look like it's pure white by comparison to everything else, but you may think I covered up a lot of those colors. Oh, they're still there. They're just layered in there. Okay, got the airbrush cleaned out, got the blood red in here. Now it's really, another good trick to do is have a couple of airbrushes sitting around that you can you can swap back and forth, you know, so you can keep the airbrushes loaded. Now I have enough over here I could do that. It's dangerous, because you'll be like, oh no, no, I, and, and you'll second guess yourself. In this situation, I just wanna, you know, come in and do this design, but I don't wanna spend forever on it. And, it, and you can do that, you can spend forever and I'm just lightly hitting the candy red here and there. I'll even use this. Ooh, this would be kind of neat. Let's come in and use the red radiating out using that stencil. Now, it's going to be hard to see what it does because of the reflectivity and unless this is cleared, but it'll give kind of a cool effect and adds extra texture to the fire. I'm getting way far away from traditional realistic fire. I'm just gonna just like, let's throw more stuff in here. Where's the kitchen sink stencil? There's a, that's what I need to do. I need to invent a kitchen sink stencil. So um, we got the red and next step, I'm gonna come in with my white and reestablish the core fire, hit it with the yellow at the end and we're gonna call this done.